Oh my goodness, what have I dragged in this time? Well, what's in this plastic toad is not something I bought for myself. It is something that we, the TV station, bought for ourselves. It is an entire NEC key telephone system with what appears to be nine phones. So let me get my bearings and uh, dig some of this out of the tote, get some of it set up on the coffee table. Now let's take a look at what, and uh, see what we got. So I spent a couple hours doing some research, reading some of the documentation for this system, and I've actually got something pretty radical here. So this is an NEC Univerge SV8100. It is a very advanced key telephone system, um, much more advanced than any North Star system. Uh, this would be at the level of the Northern Telecom Business Communication Manager, like a BCM50. This isn't quite as advanced as a BCM, but you know it, it's in between a North Star and a BCM in terms of this thing's capabilities and the uh, way that it works. So this system was actually made in 2012, so it's actually pretty new. And you could configure this to handle all sorts of different things, analog lines, uh, ISDN lines, T1 lines, VoIP lines, this is a VoIP capable machine. And likewise, you could configure it to use not only digital telephones, but IP telephones as well. And you can actually expand this to a point with multiple expansion cabinets where it could handle 200 lines and over 500 phones. Uh, that's pretty amazing. This unit, as far as I can tell, is configured for 8 lines and 20 extensions. If we look at it here, it's been configured with some uh, cards. That's how you configure one of these, I guess. This card is the standard uh, control card that they all have. It's got a compact flash card in it, which I guess has the, uh, that's probably where voicemail is stored, and maybe some configuration data. And then here's the digital station card where 16 of your digital phones can connect to and this is one of the phones one of the nine that I got with the system and uh, pretty nice looking phones they've got a big LCD display probably dot matrix lots of buttons that can be uh, programmed and apparently um, like the Toshiba Strata systems each button has uh, both a red and green LED that can light up so a bit fancier than what Northern Telecom offered at least with the normal North Star phones. What I really hate though is that the handsets are hardwired, at least on the handset end. Um, there is an RJ9 jack on the underside of the phone that this plugs into, but the, on the handset side, it's hardwired. So if your curly cord breaks or gets messed up, you've got to replace the whole handset. I hate that. That's a terrible design. <laughs> Um, but that's the way NEC chose to do it. And so this thing can handle up to 16 of these telephones. Well, I said 20 extensions. Where's the other four? And they're right here. This thing has an analog station card in it. So with this card, uh, you, could, you have four extensions uh, dedicated for single line ordinary analog telephones. That's pretty nice. And then it's got a card down here for ordinary analog phone lines. Eight of them. And as you can see, it uses RJ45 connectors to connect everything. So, for example, on the digital station card, uh, your first four extensions are carried by this one RJ45 jack. Eight pins, uh, two pins for each phone. The phones just need tip and ring, like a North Star phone would. So, yeah, that's what we're dealing with here. Um, and... The documentation altogether for this system, 3,000 pages. <laughs> this is far above, you know, my experience with the North Star systems. Um, this is actually 
abode on the same level as the Toshiba Strata system we had at my old job. And unfortunately, like that Toshiba Strata system and the Northern Telecom Business Communication Manager, uh, and actually the, the higher-end Northstar systems too, this uses software licenses. So it's not a matter of simply buying the hardware and then you own the capabilities of that hardware. Oh no, you had to pay licensing fees on top of that to enable the hardware. Now fortunately, as far as I can tell looking through the documentation, uh, what NEC decided to do with software licensing is all the features of this thing uh, that have to be licensed are just really advanced features that have nothing to do with the physical expansion cards that you install. It's stuff to do with IP telephony and uh, automated call assistant and some voicemail features and a lot of, you know, internet and IP telephony related features. That's what NEC chose to license. But as far as these uh, expansion cards are concerned, if you bought the card, you bought the full capability of the card. So regardless of how this thing is licensed, it is a 8 by 20 system. So that's good. And also a good thing, unlike the business communication manager, this is not an IBM compatible PC. Uh, this, this does not have a hard drive inside it, thank goodness. Uh, it doesn't have, it's not running some embedded version of Windows. As far as I can tell, you know, functionally, uh, in terms of how it operates and administering it, this is like a North Star system. Uh, you're not, it's not PC hardware uh, with, where you're effed if a built-in hard drive decides to fail. So that's good. That's the bane of uh, many a BCM owner. Luckily, it came with this sheet tape to it, which gives the IP address that it's addressable on because it has an Ethernet port, and to configure this thing you actually remote into it over Ethernet uh, with a PC terminal, which is good. So they gave the IP address, which is actually just the factory one, and they gave passwords. So I am glad I have those because I might need them. I don't know if this thing has a factory reset routine in it that I can initiate. I don't know. I am going to be learning as I go. This is far above anything that I've ever been allowed to lay my hands on. And on that note, I should mention, uh, what did we pay for this pretty advanced key telephone system with nine phones? 20 bucks. Unbelievable. 20 bucks. And uh, it was a private sale. I saw this on Facebook Marketplace. And the story of how the person who sold it to me got it is kind of funny. Um, she bought this system and the nine phones uh, in a government auction. That's why they all have, every piece has this tag that says 36A. Those are the government auctions identification tags. She bought this system from a government auction because she thought she was bidding on a single ordinary telephone. And she told me she paid much more than $20 for it. Now, why someone would go to a government auction and buy what they thought was an ordinary telephone for even $20, let alone more than $20, I have no idea. But she thought she was buying an ordinary analog telephone, presumably to use in her home or something, and uh, she won the auction, and when she came to pick it up, it was uh, everything I showed you in that plastic tote. And she was uh, obviously quite overwhelmed and realized that uh, she had made a poor assumption. I think she said the government auction, um, uh, the only photograph they used was of a single phone. They didn't actually make it clear, perhaps that uh, she had bid on an entire key telephone system. But uh, yeah, that's how she came upon this, and uh, she just wanted to immediately offload it and get it out of her life. So her loss, unfortunately, has been our very excellent gain. And now I'm going to spend probably the rest of my life trying to figure this thing out and uh, 
I hope it works. We will find out. And uh, if it works and if I can get it figured out and uh, uh, get in the configuration so I can customize it and everything. This will be going in the TV station, which I'm pretty darn excited about because our setup at the TV station right now is we have three rooms with telephones. We have two lines. We have two lines from Bell. And uh, we have three rooms with phones in the station. Altogether, we have two, three. We have five phones that we use in the station, and they're all ordinary analog phones. Um, a couple of the rooms have two lines running into them. One phone or one room has just one line running into it. Uh, in the studio, we have two separate phone lines running in for the for our two uh, lines from Bell, and uh, it, it's just not very convenient because like uh, when you're doing a show, when you're taping in the studio, you have to just yank the cords out of the phones so they don't ring. And in one of the rooms, we only have access to one line because only one line's running into it, and it's like, geez, what you know? I think we would be perfect candidates for a small key telephone system where every phone can have access to both lines you've got the ability to transfer you've got do not disturb that you can turn on when we're taping something uh, and it would just make things much more convenient and I've actually offered I actually offered to give the station my North Star 6x16 because I'm not using it anymore I've got the North Star compact ICS now so I offered, uh, I actually offered my 6x16 to the station, and uh, he said he'd consider it. But then this came up, and I said, hey, are you curious enough to blow $20? And he said, absolutely. So I'm very excited. I do hope that this works and that I get it all figured out. Because then we're going to have a key telephone system at the station, and a pretty advanced one at that. And I think that's going to be just the bee's knees. So, what I'd like to do first is, uh, I'm going to find an Ethernet cable, cut one end off it, so I have just the bare wires. We'll stick it in here. I will crimp some RJ11 connectors on uh, the wires at the other end. I'll plug two phones into this thing. I'll plug a power cable into this thing, and we'll turn it on and see if it works. See if the two phones I connect come to life, and see what we get. Okay, I've got two phones plugged in. The manual does not mention whether or not the phones care where tip and ring are, so I'm going to assume that it's like a North Star system and they don't care. I've got the KSU plugged in. I don't know if it'll do anything when I hit this hard power switch, but we'll find out. Oh, and I think it's on. Okay, it's not as loud as I thought it would be, luckily. It's got a cooling fan in the back. It appears to be going through a startup procedure. I just heard a relay. No activity from the phones yet. I'm not sure if it's performing a cold start or a hot start procedure. If it's doing a cold start, the manual said it'll take two minutes to do. I see the lights are still changing. As long as lights continue to change, I'm going to assume that's good. Still no activity from the phones. All the expansion cards have lights on them. Lights are still changing on the CPU card. That's good. Still no activity from the phones. Ooh. I see lots of, I see uh, that must have been a disk access light, it was flickering quite rapidly. Lights are still changing, still no activity from the phones. I heard some more relays. Things are blinking. Still no activity from the phones. Oh, we have activity. A phone just said initial. Oh, look at that. Wow, geez, it even knows what to... Uh, it even has the date and time right. Holy cow, both our phones are awake. And we have extension numbers. 221. 
222. Ooh, four, three digit extension numbers. I'm moving up in the world. Oh, this is fantastic. This is, oh, this is, I am very happy. Look at that. Now, at the risk of this being very loud, well, you know what? Before I call one phone with another phone, let me go into the menu here. The phones have a menu button. Ooh, look at that. That's awesome. Uh, ring volume. This is going to be loud, isn't it? Oops. Not too loud. Settings. There we go. There, that's nice and quiet. Get out of the menu. Wow. Oh my goodness. This <laughs> just in in user interface presentation alone, this puts North Star to shame. This puts Toshiba Strata to shame. What a nice looking system. We'll see how it works, but I'm gonna pick up this phone and I don't know if I'm gonna be on intercom. I am getting a dial tone, so I am on intercom. And I'm gonna dial 221. Oh my goodness. Listen to that, oh it's too quiet now. And they're on a call now. Look at the lights. I love this. What a cool phone system. This is great. Oh my goodness. There you go. Oh, you know what? I think this is a great place to end this video. There is a first look at an NEC Univerge SV8100 key telephone system from the 2010s that we bought for $20 with nine phones. This is excellent. Oh boy, you're gonna be seeing more of this system because now my job is gonna be to configure the heck out of it and get it ready for when we install it at the station, which will happen whenever I'm done. So there you go. Wow, I am super excited. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you may have found this interesting. And perhaps you're excited to uh, see more of this system as I configure it and learn about its capabilities. So that's it. And I'll see you in the next video.